Aha. First things first. So this session was called CDS and mod model driven apps. I can see Jim's very quickly uh, made the change to Dataverse, which I still have not got used to as a product name. Um, but yeah, this session is all about uh, the, the possibilities, I guess, you know, the art of the possible, what you can do with model driven apps and where they sort of fit in in the Power Platform, um, but a couple of points of admin before we get started. If everybody can mute, if they're not going to, if they don't want to ask a question right now, if you could all mute, that'd be great. And then we don't get the feedback and echoing and stuff like that. So um, thank you for that. And if you do want to ask questions, that's absolutely fine. If I can ask you to just raise your hand in Teams. Obviously, there's not a lot of point in doing it uh, if you haven't got your video on. But um, yeah, it, it's uh, if you raise your hand or using that little function in Teams or just drop a question in the chat, um, I will um, just uh, keep an eye on the chat for Jim because obviously that lets him concentrate on what he's presenting. And I will interrupt at um, you know appropriate points to ask these questions. So either I can ask it or if you want, you can come off mute and ask the question. If you want to turn your video on, that's great. And, it, you know, that's a bit more interactive as well. So, um, yeah, with that, I think we will uh, get going. And I'll ask Jim to take it away. Thanks very much, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, you, you described it perfectly. This, this presentation is uh, about Dataverse, which I, I was scrambling this morning. I'm like, gosh, do I want to change it? Yeah, I guess I have to. So I went through and made some changes. Let me know if I missed anything in my slides. But yeah, this this is about the art of the possible. It's a great way to describe it. Um, several years ago, I did a presentation on on XRM before the Power Platform is really a branded thing. And it was how do we use CRM in an XRM way, right? And it's what can I do with this platform as opposed to just doing customer relationship management. And XRM, if you haven't heard, was called anything relationship management. And that's kind of what the common data service, now Dataverse, really offered up. It took that uh, um, capability and, and made it a first class citizen it's in the, in the uh, Microsoft world. <clears throat> so let me... Uh, Get right into it. That's me. It's a little bit of information. I think this is out on the on the site, so we can skip that. Um, but what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about what we just what we just mentioned here. We're going to talk about what is the dataverse. Some of the, the as, as as Andrew mentioned, the art of the possible. So, what are the core features that you can leverage for building business solutions, and and what are the benefits of doing so? If you're making a decision to build enterprise applications, whether it's in a in a large organization, small organization, or the government, which is where I do a lot of work, this is a really nice platform, in my opinion. Um, for building a whole slew of different uh, uh, solutions across your enterprise. Um, and then we back up a little bit and we say, how does this fit into the Power Platform as a whole? Because that's a little bit confusing. I still struggle with it myself. And then we'll look at some of the, the existing examples with, with Dataverse, formerly CDS, which I'm, I'm going to stumble on that. And we'll do a quick demo. We'll try to get into, you know, given, given the amount of time we have, we'll try to just get in and build something. And then we'll have a list of links. All the things we're talking about, I tried to put together in links so that we can go through and do some more, more learning after the fact and, and read all the name changes. <clears throat> So what is Dataverse? I actually did an edit replace all and it was turned out to be what is the Dataverse, which makes it sound like a comic book um, or a movie, um, the Marvel movies and all that. So so what is it? It's right off of the, the website and I had to update the definition too because they did a good job updating that is Dataverse lets you securely store and manage data that's used by your business applications. Well, what does that really mean? And so my, my translation of it is the Dataverse allows non-developers to build these enterprise solutions, these enterprise cloud-hosted relational database services, which is kind of a mouthful, but I, I, I phrase it that way on purpose. <clears throat> so we're not just building a database, we're building services for data. And, and that's that's kind of a key thing. You mentioned that it's 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 um, you know an evolution of XRM, and uh, you know it's for me it's an evolution of the dynamic CRM platform that we you know used to use back in the CRM four, three, four, five, or sorry, 2011 days, <clears throat> all the way up through 2016, 365, and now Power Platform, Common Data Service, Dataverse. So it's an evolution. It's it's been there for a while. So what this allows us to do is not just build that. It used to just be SQL Server, right? We're designing a SQL Server database. Now we're designing data services, which means you don't really have access to the database directly, but you're going to build a relational database on the back end. And some of the, the way the data the data, way the data is persisted is kind of transparent to you. I can store a text field, I can store a number field, or I can store an image. And I don't really care. I just kind of get to it the same way. And it's related to what's called a table. And it's a, and it's a column on a table. If I get the name incorrectly, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, <clears throat> I keep calling them attributes, fields, whatever you want to call them. 
but it allows us to design these things without worrying about the underlying infrastructure. Where is it being persisted? Is it in SQL Server? Is it in Cosmos DB? Is it in Azure Blob Storage? We don't really don't really know and don't really care to a large degree. Um, this, this platform, Dataverse, allows us to build these things without knowing about it. And again, it's non-developers building this too. I don't have to be a, a database architect. I don't have to be a, a C-sharp developer. I can be a, a functional consultant coming in and building a very robust system without having to, to, to write a line of code, <clears throat> whether it's um, C-sharp code or, you know, SQL, you know, T-SQL. <clears throat> and one, one point here, and there's a, a link in the end, uh, what the Dataverse is, again, I'm going to call it, I keep getting it wrong, it was Common Data Service, was an implementation of the Common Data Model. And what does that mean? The Common Data Model, and there's a link to it in the end that talks about it in more detail, it's a, it's a common specification Microsoft put forth and maintains, which has a series of Cust or sorry, um, common data elements across different industries. For example, contact and account are two of the core things we can look at. Um, there's a common definition for what the data elements are, <clears throat> how they relate to each other, and what Dataverse is, is an implementation of that. So if you implement something on Dataverse, you can rely on another CDM compliant system to be in line with your, with your data definition. And that's pretty important if you're building systems across an enterprise or even between um, organizations. Oh, and as Andrew mentioned, I, I, I might talk a little bit fast here just to, so we can get through these, but feel free to jump in with questions if you have. And I always think I've given this presentation a few times now, and I realize we're scratching the surface. There's tons more to this than we're going to cover today. There's all kinds of things that, that, that you can do on this platform. So we're literally just going to be scratching the surface. So pl please feel free to jump in with a question or a comment. Um, I'm always you know, looking to learn something new myself during these things. So, so what are some of the core features that you might be interested in? If you're looking at an enterprise platform for building solutions across your organization, whether again, big, small, government, whatever, <clears throat> what are some of the things you're gonna look at and, and to make your decision as to wh whether I should choose this platform or not? Um, data modeling, right off the bat. We talk about data, 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 data is everywhere. <clears throat> whether it's Dataverse or Common Data Service, Common Data Model, you're, you're building a, a, a data store behind the scenes. So you're going to be building what's called tables now. They're called columns, which are which tables have columns, which I guess that refers to fields and attributes is in the old way of thinking. And if you want to think of it, if you're not familiar with database terminology, think of Excel. You have a tab in Excel with, with columns and rows. Um, and with that, you get data entry forms, which means it gives you a way to collect your data, predefined views, which are state, you know, saving off predefined queries. You can apply some business logic to it through business rules. And you can also, again, back to the relational bit, you're building a relational database system, which is pretty important. It's not just a dumping route for data. It's a way of relating the data between, uh, between both custom and system tables. So that's, it's, it's kind of meant to, the, to be a, a fancy database designer plus on steroids, plus some really cool stuff. So we don't want to just define what the data is and where it's stored and how it's structured. We want to give the ability to enter in data, give that surface that to your end users through the, through the views, through the forms, through the relationships and the rules. <clears throat> and to do that, we, we wrap all those, those different uh, capabilities up into what's called a model-driven app. It's a way of collecting those components about your data tables under the hood and surfacing them in kind of a targeted experience for certain end users. For example, I might have a, a, a case management system, which is one of the products that Microsoft offers, but you can build your own. And I might have two different teams of people. You might have the people that are selling and the people that are responding to the, to the issues. And you, know, you have the data being shared, but you don't want to have all the information for the salespeople in front of the, the case management people and vice versa. So you would build a model-driven app that's targeted for each. I'm only going to surface the data and the, the components that are relevant to them. And that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. It's, again, all configuration, no code. Um, you just design this, put it out there, and, and your, your end users can consume it very easily. Now that we've got the data and we've got them putting data into the system and they can interact with it, we can also help them automate their business processes. So cool, I got all this data, I, I'm collecting it from my end users. How do we make their lives easier by automating some of the stuff, whether it's through something simple like data validation or some complex transformations or moving data through, through different processes. And in the screen capture here, this is right out of the documentation. It's an example of what's called a business process flow business process flow, pardon me. And this is a visual representation of, hey, I've got this, what that screen represents is a row in the table. And I think that terminology is a bit wrong. Um, I'm sure I'm getting that wrong with the new, the new update, but I've got a row in a database and I'm looking at all the columns, which are the fields um, in an entity called, um, uh, wait, what, are, what are we looking at? 
I'm not even sure what that is. Um, let's say it's a case. <laughs> Um, I'm looking at all the, the data related to one record in your database, and I'm, I'm able to walk the person who's, who's interacting with this through the, the, a process which is called challenge management. <clears throat> and they've got a couple different stages. And each stage, we've got some targeted fields that are relevant to what they're doing at that point. So it's a really nice way of putting a visual indicator. And behind the scenes, you can also call other workflows. You can automate other processes. You can connect other data. You can fill in all kinds of stuff. You can automate what's happening in each of those stages as well. So continued a couple of more a couple a couple more items that are pretty pretty relevant to your your decision making process security. So I got all this data. How do I make sure the right people are allowed to see it, um, and the, the people that aren't allowed to see it aren't allowed to see it, right? You're only allowed to see what your what, what your your um, your uh, your what is it need to uh, need to know basis, right? You know, I'm only going to work with the data that I, I should have access to. And there's two layers to it, and it's built into the, the Dataverse platform. They use Azure Active Directory security and, and uh, identity and access management, and that's the authentication bit. So two two kind of ways of of those talking about security around your system. Two very common ways is authentication and authorization. The first bit is authentication using Azure Active Directory. Out of the box, it just works. You set up your account, and the user can log in. And once you get into your, your, your environment, and we'll talk about an environment in a moment, um, we can secure what you can do with that data. Now that you have access to it, where can you manipulate it? What can you do down to like the CRUD operations, create, update, read, and all that fun stuff? And also, you know, access to different components within your model-driven app. So that's your authorization layer. And that's all configurable too. I mean, there's it's highly configurable, let's put it that way. Um, by the way, th this isn't meant to be the perfect solution. Um, this isn't meant to be the Dataverse and, and all of its capabilities aren't meant to be just this magical thing. It's, but it's a very, very, very powerful platform to allow somebody who might not be a developer to come in and design out a very robust system without having to rely on the code. So you get authentication and then you get authorization, all, all does, you know, configurable within your system. If you do get to a point where you know you need to extend it past what the configuration offers, you can extend it. You can write custom.NET code, which can be invoked through plugins, which is a common method of, of, of kind of interjecting your code into the what the 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 the, the pipeline is what they call it, the, the plugin pipeline. So if I create a new record, I can do something with the data before it's saved or after it's saved. Um, another uh, area you can configure is the front end, the user interface. You can either apply custom JavaScript, which is a very common method in past pl past releases, but more recent releases they've released what's called a, a Power Apps Component Framework. So when you see PCF, what that's kind of a common spec for writing client side code for both a visual and a and a um, business uh, business rule uh, uh, platform. So you can customize your user interface pretty extensively using PCF controls. You can completely rewrite the whole UI for your for a, a form if you'd like to. Not recommended. Kind of defeats the purpose, but you could. Um, and then integration. So we talked about extending it through these plugins and stuff. What if I have an external system that I want to integrate with? Well, it's built in, right? So it's it's actually all the front end stuff that, that the, the user interface does. Most of it is accessible through these web API endpoints. Um, they have REST endpoints and old school SOAP endpoints. So you can integrate with all kinds of other systems. There's And there that's a whole other, like, <laughs> that's a, a several hour conversation. But it's baked into the system. So if you have systems if you have legacy systems that you want to bring up over time this is this is a really powerful uh, uh, component for it. the integration framework built into the data versus is pretty 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 impressive so with all those capabilities and you choose it what are your benefits how do you how do you you know what's your return on investment let's say so you get a, what's called low code no code I'm sure you've heard that if you're familiar with our platform it's been a, a pretty pretty uh, uh, popular buzz phrase, as you say, not buzzword, buzz phrase for a while. But, and, I, and I mentioned it earlier. I, I, I can come in and design a system and being a non-developer that's fully functional without writing a line of code, deploy it, manage it, own the whole thing without without talking to a developer. And that's that's pretty impressive. Coming from a development background, I've gotten very lazy, you know, and, and <laughs> I, I, I think it's a good thing because what I can do is I can say, I'm going to put this platform in the hands of the people that know the business better than I do. They're going to design and build whatever they can. Then when, I, when they hit that, that limit, the limitation, the wall, whatever you want to call it, um, then I can step in and focus on only building the pieces I need to build. 
you know, I, I, we look at the, the right hand side here and I have a very simple graphic that shows, you know, if I'm a developer working in custom dev, I have to build out all the plumbing. I have to make sure people can authenticate. I can make sure that they see the data they want to see all the authorization stuff we talked about the, the, authentication authorization that alone is a massive amount of investment and development and i don't have to do that then i have to design out the business entities make sure people can see them all that fun stuff with a common data service sorry dataverse oh man it's an autopilot there with dataverse you you can design all that out and then whenever you hit a point where you know what i, I don't have a configuration option for this i call a developer they build a plug-in they build some custom ui elements they integrate with something they can focus on only that bit integrating into all the other stuff, which is designed by an end user <clears throat> or a functional consultant, I should say. The other bit you get for this is you have, let's say you have five different solutions you want to bring up. You've got a, a legacy platform that you're trying to bring into the you know 21st century. Um, you've got a common platform. If you build one solution, you now know how to build the next. You, It's a very common platform. It's not just learning a common language. All the components are, are you know, reusable across solutions. You, you, if I jump into a, 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 a model-driven app that somebody else built, I'm familiar with the, 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 the vast majority of it. Now I just need to learn what they, what they built and what's their business process. And I mentioned sharing them. If I build a common solution, let's say I have a common method for dealing with cases, um, and I've got some some logic that applies to you know the record or the process around it. I can share that. I can move that around. Or if I've got a common set of data elements, for example, I you know I have a medical system and I'm dealing with patients, medical records, all kinds of stuff there, and I have ten different solutions when I access that. I can put it in one place and share that across solutions using. Solutions this is what they're called actually and that's pretty powerful too. Then I build things once I use it in multiple places I've got issues. I fix them in one place I deploy them into multiple places and then again the business solution teams can focus on only what they need to build as opposed to Even just the common data stuff. They don't have to worry about the plumbing, but they can also rely on somebody else to build the common elements and then you have a consolidate from your from your IT department the first person is going to come out and say that you know, what do I need to do as your CTO, CIO, which is rightfully a big concern. I got this new thing. How do I administer it? Well, all those tools are built into the, the Dataverse and the overarching platform that it lives in. I mean, all the, the IT infrastructure, you're not doing on-prem stuff unless you really, really want to. But we're talking about cloud infrastructure, which is managed all through administrative tools offered up through the platform. And that's pretty powerful because you can manage multiple environments all in the same way. You don't have to worry about rolling out servers, updates, all that fun stuff. And that's that's a pretty important cost savings and administrative savings for your IT department. So back up a little bit, we talked about Dataverse. How does it fit into, okay, cool, I got the updated graphic and the updated icons. We, got, we have new icons for this too. So how does this fit into the Power Platform as a whole? Because it's, it's kind of confusing talking about it. If you dive into it, we talk about Power Platform, Power Apps, all these other things. Dataverse is kind of one of the underlying infrastructure bits, right? It's, it's something that a lot of different things are built upon. So if you look at the Power Platform graphic, this is the common one that's shown all over the place. And again, it's been since been updated. Um, we won't talk about the previous update that went away. But they've got updated icons. But you can see the solutions, Power BI, Power Apps, which are model-driven in Canvas apps, Power Automate, Virtual Agents, all rely on the stuff on the bottom layer. And one of them is Dataverse, right? That's how a lot of these applications can store their data, build relational systems, automate processes through through all kinds of different tools that are built into the, the, the Dataverse. I know I keep calling it a, it's a solution or a platform or, or infrastructure bit. Not really sure what to call it here. Um, but you can see all the different bits they're relying on. And in fact, this graphic doesn't even include all of them. One of them miss, they miss out on is Power Apps Portals, which is completely dependent upon Dataverse as a whole. I, you know, the, the Power Apps Portals is a front end on your data for external users, and it's, it's built right on Dataverse as both its content management system and its, and its business logic. So it's pretty cool that it's, it's, it's being used for all these other platforms. So it's not just this new thing Microsoft has thrown over the fence. They're, the phrase kind of gives me the willies, but they're eating their own dog food, right? They're, they're using this Dataverse product, platform, tool, um, infrastructure bit that you and I can leverage for building custom stuff. They're using it for their own stuff. And that's pretty cool. So you can think that, you know, it's gonna, they're going to put a, a lot of work into making it work well. So that builds a little bit of confidence in making this choice. So it's, it's again, the first line, it's a key element of the Power Platform as a whole. So what are some examples of, of uh, 
dataverse solutions, um, model-driven app first party, you know, or, or model-driven app solutions built on dataverse. Well, all the 365 products are first party dataverse apps if you want to think of them that way. And this kind of struck me, I was in a, um, a session a couple years ago, whenever I was first learning about the Power Platform, things were kind of, it'd been out for a year or two, I guess, and I still wasn't quite, a, it didn't really register for me. And it was called Common Data Service at that point. I didn't quite understand what it was. And I, I think it was Charles Lamana, who's kind of well known now, was saying, oh yeah, customer engagement's a power app. And, and that, I'm like, oh, you know, the light goes off and all that. So that's that's one way to think about it. Now, what they did with one of the releases, and I believe it was nine, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, is they, they, they ripped a lot of the capabilities out and that's where Common Data Service came into play, which is not Dataverse. And they built all the capabilities we talked about, the, the, the model-driven app bits, the form designer, the entity designer, which is now table designer. All those were ripped out and, and made part of the Common Data Service, now Dataverse. And then they, they built CE on top of it. They built marketing on top of it. They built um, portals on top of field services. All those are built on common data or dataverse. <laughs> I'll get there, we'll get there. Um, so these first party applications, these first party solutions are built on dataverse. So that again, an, another example, they're selling these things built on dataverse, but we can build our own. So again, it builds some, some confidence in, in choosing the platform. And here's some other examples. The solution accelerators are a series of, of solutions you know, that are kind of starter kits for these different industries. Um, and Microsoft's putting them out there, investing some time in them. There's been some some changes recently in the news about them, but you can go check these out. Look at the code behind it. It's, hey, here's, here's how to use the platform. Here's how to use dataverse to build your own stuff. And here is, um, uh, sorry, I got a phone call. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, kind of freaked me out. But you have got, you know, you can walk into healthcare. I think I mentioned that earlier with a medical record. That's that's a common problem that's been around for 30, 40 years in the tech world is how do we manage our, our patient data? Nonprofit accelerators, a very common way of doing business. They built these on Dataverse, manufacturing, financial, education. You can go out and look at these examples and, and they're fully functional. And they're meant to be grab it, download it, configure it, and, and reuse it. And, you know, you've got a starter kit if you want to call it that. In fact, I think they used to call it that at one point. So these are just some examples, but again, really, really important examples of what can you build on Dataverse? Well, Microsoft built customer engagement. <laughs> so it's a, it's a pretty good, pretty good example of, of the power of the platform. So where are we in time? We're about 25 minutes in. Let's, let's just jump in and take a look at, let's build something um, and, and browse around the Dataverse tools. Let's see if uh, we, can, we can build something real quick. Make sure I only bring up my environment here. I think I have one. Yeah, I think this is the right one. Um, so what I did is I just jumped into uh, open up Office, open up Power App. So what we're looking at here is is the the Maker Portal. Um, there's another version of this, the preview you can go to. But we're just looking at the standard one. And what I did is I changed to an environment. And an environment um, is is a way of containing your apps, your flows, your data, and securing these different solutions um, from each other. Right, so I can fire up a new environment, um, and again, I've got some links to this. You can go read about it in more detail, but it's a pretty powerful, um, pun intended, but uh, a component of building your 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 platform. So if if you're worried about sharing data, for example, you go into a hospital system, and they they say I have I have a, a solution for um, intake, and I have a solution for administration. Um, I don't want them crossing paths. You can just build an environment for each, build your app within, and you're, and you're good to go. So when we talk about an environment, it's a way of containing all of our stuff. Um, it's a very broad term, of course. So what so, I can do so is- Jim, yeah. sorry, can I, can I very quickly ask you just to zoom in a bit? Um, oh yeah, sure. It's sure. coming out quite small, thank you. Ooh, geez, a little bit too much. I got a little excited there. So yeah, so we <laughs> have, um, yeah, no problem, no problem. Um, we have our environment, and this is just a, a, a one that I threw up. That I, that I have a, just testing stuff in and it's a clean environment. But what we can see right away is these are the solutions and the solution is a way of packaging up all the things we talked about, your tables, your columns, all the things related to your, your I keep wanting to call it an entity, the, the table, the forms, all the things around it. So we have packaging up and deploying it. And you can see we have a default solution if we just open that up real quick, these are the 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 common elements that come with a common data common data model. Uh, uh, make sure I get that right. See, these are elements that Microsoft has implemented as per the common data model spec, and you get it for free. You fire, well, I shouldn't say that. You pay licensing, but you don't have to build it. So you you get a new Power Apps license, which is a whole other conversation, very contentious one. 
I've got a built-in system table called account. I'm like, that's pretty cool. That's there's a ton of information behind this. Let me just look at it real quick. Um, very common one. Account in in you know a lot of businesses refers to a business. And I've got another one we'll we'll jump into in a moment called a contact, which represents a person. Two really, really, really common things. And you can see here what I opened up is you can see the columns within um, and the relationships, the business rules, views, forms, dashboards. But right away, I've got, I think I'm just showing the default view. These are things you don't have to build. These are things you get for free. Um, and, and it's just a pain. So again, I'm back to being a lazy developer. I don't want to have to build this stuff. And I want it to be common. I want everybody to understand what an account is. Well, it's predefined. We can follow this as our standard. And that way, I know that anybody coming in will know what we're, what we're talking about when we reference an account. Even just the silly ones like address. Here's a common way of dealing with addresses. Very, very cool stuff. And you can see the different types. I've got what's called a unique identifier, which is kind of the primary key if you're a database person in your in your your table. Text fields, pretty common, obviously, and you got some options on that. A choice is a is what's called a, used to be called an option set. Now it's called a choice, and I forgot about that. Um, but it gives you a way of giving you a drop down in your front end. I can give them a, a limited number of choices for for their for the field. Multi line text text, text, uh, floating point numbers. You can deal with the numeric values here as well. So these are all the data columns that have different types that you can put onto your, your table. Speaking slowly, so I make sure I get the terminology correct. Within that, I've also got relationships because it's I mentioned it multiple times, you got a relational database system. And these are just some that come with, let me change the view and just show all and you can see what you get. Tons and tons and tons of stuff. Some common elements called uh, uh, activities, pardon me. So you got some common things here. These are reference to different types of, of activities built into the system. It's a custom table that, that has some special capabilities to it. But you can see the relationships here. And you can see I've got a portal just deployed. So I've got a relationship to a web role. I've got a relationship to a website. Um, these are different relationships. This is where you're building your, your foreign keys if you're a database person. Um, but you can build it in this designer. And there's a lot of, lot, lot of stuff behind it as well. We've also got business rules. You can automate some stuff, nothing with an account that comes out of the box. Views are a way of saving off predefined queries, right? So you know what? I've got all this data. Let me make sure they can filter it and sort it and see it easily as opposed to having to drill through everything. So these are just ways of saving off queries for your for your customer. Um, and you can see these are the come with an account, pretty, pretty intuitive for the most for the most part. And then here's a really, really, really powerful thing again coming in from the developer background. Um, I'll just open up one of the, the data entry forms. We talked about designing the data structures. Now let's let them go put data into the system, take all those fields, pop them onto a form, and I can serve this up and they can put data into the system. But I can also put in all kinds of fancy stuff. They have what's called a timeline, which shows related what are with a special uh, table type called note or annotation, which is just a kind of a free text bit. I can put in all my different activity types, whether it's an appointment or a phone call, all kinds of different things that come out of the box with a common data model and the dataverse implementation of it. But it allows me to put in a visual and effectively much, much more visual, you know, real world, what WYSIWYG, I think is the phrase, um, version of, of what the customer is going to see. And I've got, you know, I can put on um, what's called a, a lookup. I don't know if that's changed or not. Did that field type change? I think it's still a lookup. Um, but what I can do is, yeah, it's still a lookup. Good. Um, I think I was sit, typing it wrong. But this is where we get into relationships. I've got what's called a primary contact on my account. That relates over to a contact table. This is our relationship. I can drill through and I can, I can give them the ability to not just open up one record at a time, but I can see summaries of related information. I can drill through to those records. And that's a pretty powerful thing. Again, I'm coming back to if I had to build this, this would be painful. There's an enormous amount of work behind this, like literally a decade's worth of development behind this. So you're getting that with the Power Platform, or sorry, Dataverse on the Power Platform. So you can see, and it's got a couple of different tabs, all the different fields. You can segment it by section and tab and all that. So it's got some pretty um, pretty cool uh, layout options. But again, you're, the, the downside, this isn't, you're not doing custom dev. You're, you're working within the boundaries of, of what's offered by the Power Platform, the form designer. And you know we can go over to a contact and see some of those details. Again, just another one of the out of the box um, tables. I know I'll get that right someday. Um, and you can see all the stuff that comes with the system. I've got, I do have um, some solutions deployed, which we saw. Just bring up contact because that's a popular one. And you can see all the the table, the the columns that come with um, relationships as well. Pretty core to a lot of different solutions. All kinds of stuff. 
building this is painful. Maintaining this is painful from custom dev. So if you want to, if you want to talk to your your IT people about this, non-developer functional person can come in and build all of this stuff. And 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 all the parameters. Let me just open up one of them real quick. Um, the address one, for example, you've got some options around. I can specify the max length. I can specify whether it's searchable. I can say that you know it's um, auditing is enabled. All kinds of different capabilities that are just parameters that I can define when building a solution, and the platform just serves it up appropriately for me. If the end user tries to enter into more than a thousand characters, it won't allow them. Like that's that sounds really silly, but you've got hundreds, if not thousands, of fields across your solution. Man, that could be painful to write code for. And they've given you an infrastructure to do it. So it sounds sounds kind of like well, obviously, right? We're we're kind of spoiled and used to it. But that's that's some pretty cool stuff, you know. If you had again, I'm thinking back to my custom dev days and hair in the back of my neck is standing up, and it just gives me the you know gives me the creeps. Um, and again, if there's a problem with it, Microsoft fixes it, and we get the benefit of it. So let me let's just build one real quick. We'll go in and, and we'll just do. Um, Build a custom attribute first. Oh, and by the way, you can see all the different solutions. Lots and lots of stuff. Oh, wait, wrong, wrong tab. Lots and lots of stuff. So they, and just as, as I mentioned earlier, some of the first party solutions are common data service, or sorry, Dataverse solutions. We'll edit that out, right? We'll edit that out in post-production. But um, so they install the default solution, which is the implementation of the common data model, right? For the most part. And then they put all this stuff on top of it. You know, you've got all these different checker, power apps, uh, 365 portals, portal dependency. So you can see that they're using Dataverse themselves. Microsoft, when building their products, is using Dataverse and using solutions, using all the infrastructure, which again, whole other conversation around ALM processes, infrastructure, managing your solutions. Probably 10 conversations around that, you know, 10 one hour sessions around it. Um, but you can see that they're using it themselves. So if, if we wanted to build one ourselves, um, and we'll go through this real quick, I'll build a table. Um, and we'll call it uh, power up. Ooh, caps lock is on. Let's say we want to build an event management solution like um, Andrew's really familiar with right now. He's managing an event. He had, a, and it was cool. If you ever look at their website, they show all the sessions, they show the people, they show the, the event itself, some details about that. What if I wanted to build an event management system myself? We can do that in common data or Dataverse. Um, I'm going to add a publisher. This just allows me to segment who built what. Um, it's a way of identifying who built the solution that we're going to be deploying. So we put one in real quick. <clears throat> it's being temperamental, so the demo gods are, are not being friendly right now. Um, let's see if this comes up. There we go. And we'll call it power up. And again, this is a way, like, let's say I built a solution I wanted to hand off. Andrew wanted me to build this for him. I can deploy the solution and I've got a publisher that says who I am. And it also allows me to segment my, my entity definitions, the attributes, this, the, sorry, table definitions, the attributes, all the things associated with it. It gives me a custom prefix for numbers. Lots and lots and lots of stuff coming in for whenever I get into the designer um, uh, of the table, of the columns, of the views, all that fun stuff. So let me see if it popped up now. There we go, power up. So I chose a publisher and what I'm doing is I'm creating a new solution, a new container for the stuff we're doing, some options here. And all the solution is is a way of collecting the tables and, and all of their related components and a bunch of other stuff, flows, um, uh, uh, processes, all kinds of stuff behind the scenes you can put into a solution. So what I did was an empty container and now I wanna add a new table. And let's call it just call it power up event is what this is going to allow us to track is an event that's occurring like today, right? And it would have a couple different attributes on it. It would have a couple different fields we care about. Um, I have them listed over here. I'm looking at my other screen, but I have a, what's called, what, what I'm doing is I'm saying, give me a table and I'm going to call it power up event. And it's got a plural name. So whenever I go into different views in the system, it gives me some, some, uh, and these are all, you can put into translations, by the way, another <laughs> whole other session. And you've, what we're going to do is we're just going to say under the hood, the schema name that the, the database designer will use is power up. That's our pre, uh, prefix that came from our publisher. And it gives me a unique table name. <clears throat> and it gives me some common fields. You go into the solution and you have like the lookup, which we saw in the, in the designer or a view. It gives me a way of here's my primary field that I want to show. So it's going to give me a sort of a summary name to make it unique whenever the user comes in. 
I've got the ability to do attachments. We need to see some of the different uh, details here. I can have attachments, which basically allows me to put on a note or a file. Pretty cool. I want to upload a Word document with this or a logo, for example. Description for, for later. Um, table type with a couple, a couple different types. There's a special type called, type called activity, which gives us some extended capabilities, but it's a little bit quirky. Um, very cool if you have a good solution for it, but it's, it can cause some issues of security. And I can have different types of ownership. I can say that this, this, this event can be owned by a person or a team, right? A user in the system, or you know what? This is kind of configuration reference data. So there's no individual owner, it's owned by the organization. And that's, that's key whenever you're designing your system. Let's say I've got a list of states, right? That I want to surface up to the end user. That's not something I want a person to own, I want the system to own it. Um, collaboration, a bunch of, bunch of um, uh, details around collaboration. You can see that it's pretty extensive. We're not just defining a table in the system, we're defining how we access it and how it relates to other tables in the system. Lots and lots of stuff going on here. Queues are a pretty powerful mechanism built in. You can integrate with SharePoint, mail merge, you can send emails to it. You can see there's a whole slew of different capabilities here. So once again, we're, we're back to like slide one where not just building a database, we're building all the capabilities around it. We're building applications around data. So <clears throat> some create and update settings here, duplicate detection, enable change tracking for different capabilities. We're just gonna create a, a table here. And the first thing it does is it very much a nicer experience in the past. It, it'll start working, but, or it'll build in the background, allow us to start working. And we can just put in a couple of, of columns here and we can see the different types that we saw earlier. So what we can do is, I'll just put in a couple real quickly here because we're, we're getting up on time. Um, so I'm gonna have like a start date. You see I'm cheating, I'm copying and pasting. And what it allows me to do is um, I can have a date and time field here or I can have date only. So again, another under the hood, it's gonna persist it in the database is either a date and time, but it allows you to control how it's served up to the end users. So I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna, of course, we wanna have an end date for our event. Um, and you can see that it's it's giving me some notifications on the, over here on the side saying things are being provisioned in the background. Trust us, we're working is basically what it's telling us. I have a date and time here for the end date. And you can see what it's doing is it's using that prefix for all the components within my table, not just the table itself, but all the columns within. So when I come into the system, I can see that I'm the one that created it. The power up solution was created. And I'm gonna have a, a detailed summary, which is just a big text field. and what I wanna do there is not just text, but I wanna do multi-line text because they can enter in all kinds of stuff and then it's given the ability to enter in 20,000 characters because they're really proud of the event and they wanna talk about it. And uh, let's do a, a, a flag indicating whether it's a Boolean event, or sorry, a Boolean event, sorry, virtual event as a Boolean. And that's a different type called yes, no. Again, pretty intuitive. Oh, I wonder what their choices are gonna be. It's either yes or no. And we'll put that on the on the, on the the attribute and then an address field, just a big text box for an address field. So you can see, I, I got lazy here. I, they had all the addresses for like contact and account, but I didn't feel like entering it. I'm just gonna put a text box in and then I'm going to say they're allowed to put in a thousand characters and I want to show this as a text area. So again, defining the data, but also how it's going to be rendered on the screen on the form. So that's pretty cool. So we'll say done. And when you save it, they've done some little tweaks it used to be published and all that fun stuff. Now that I've got my event, I can go into design a Dan entry form for it. <clears throat> and again, I'm, I'm talking a little bit fast here. And what we'll do is I just wanted to show you what it's like. What I just did was, and again, think about the developer side of things. I build a table and imagine writing what is a DDL script, I think is what it used to be called in, in T-SQL, a data definition. I build a table and I just put a bunch of fields on it with all kinds of different parameters around it. And now what I'm gonna do is I've got a couple of different form types and what I wanna do is a main entry form. Now I'm gonna design the user interface for it, the front end for it, which again, writing code for this on your own would be very painful. <clears throat> but now here I can just go in and say, give me the event start date and time. Is it a virtual event? And we'll show me the detailed summary here. And you know what? I'm, I want these to be side by side. So I've got some cool capabilities here. I can add a new, um, it's called a two column section. Uh, oh wait, no, I wanna change that. I want to change this to a one column section, put my detailed summary down here and have it span two columns. 
and I want to change this to two columns so I can have them side by side because that just looks better to me. Um, event start date. Is it a virtual event? First off, it's just a flag. <clears throat> And I just designed my data entry screen for this for this table. So I've got a table with a whole bunch of columns on it, which are I've got a table in a database. I've got a bunch of fields or attributes, depending on who you're talking to. <clears throat> I've got a whole bunch of parameters around them, how they should behave. And, you know, text field, I've got a start date, end date. Ooh, they're backwards. Let me change that. I've also got to look up to what's what's called an owner field. I didn't build that. That came with the database, the, the table when I defined it. I've got a detailed summary, which I want to make that a couple of rows high. And I can hit publish and I, I just designed basically a data entry for an event in my system. So once that publishes, we can go through real quick and see it in action. This is another thing right now, as you notice, I haven't pulled up any developer tools at all. I'm still within the system and within, within my designer, I can test it as well. I keep coming back to the custom development experience. If you're not a developer, it should still be kind of familiar to you. I got to write the code behind all this stuff. I got to build the, the, the place to host it. You know, like I'm hosting this online right now through my environment, pushing a couple of buttons, and now I've got a data entry thing, right? I can enter in text here. I've got a control that allows me to enter in a date and time, and it's going to be a long one. We're going from, we're going to July of, oh wait, that's backwards. So I've got a fully functional control here, dates and times. I'm going from December through February. It's a really long event. And it's starting at 8 a.m. to 8 a.m. So again, what you can see here is I've designed this form, have a written line of code, but I've got a fully functional data entry system for an event. That's, that's some cool stuff. And well, I can actually save it here through my testing. ILM testing, I can I can do this. And again, I think of the infrastructure behind this. Think of think of having to build and own this. I just saved a record in my system. If I come back here, refresh data, I can now edit it. That's some pretty powerful stuff. Again, all the tools behind this, all the stuff where it's being stored, all the designer elements, and then serving it up. And, and we haven't even touched on security or anything like that. So if we want to look at a more fully functional one, so we are at about I got a little bit of time here. Let me just pull up one where I, I built it before and we can see it's a little bit more. What I did here is I built a solution, saved it off and I imported it as what is called a managed solution. So this gets into a little bit of how we deploy. You notice I can't really modify this. So it's kind of nice if you build a solution you want to send off but keep people from modifying it. There's some capabilities for doing that and here's one of them. So if I go to my power up event and I want to see what I, well, we didn't do anything with sessions while well, I did over here because I cheated and I did it ahead of time. So if I open up my um, edit my record, what we can see is well, in this solution over here, I build another another entity, sorry, table. <laughs> I'll get it right, I swear. Another table called session. And it's got a couple of fields, but what we've done is, you know, it's got a couple of fields here. We've got a few, um, just filter by customs. We added a couple of fields here to session and pow up description, end time, start time, the name, the event ID is what it's related to. So this is a session which related to a power up event and we can see it in action here. So what I've got is a related grid down here that shows me I've got sessions that are related to my record here at the top. And, and in total time to build this, I did it you know, prior to the sessions. I wasn't sure how much time, it, probably about 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, just going through without talking and entering this stuff in. I've got an event with a summary, all the fields we talked about. I've got a related record here with a session. It's a very specific session. Um, you can see I did it. To, oh, it's it's past. Shoot, we missed it. Um, Susanna Stubber was doing a, a session for this event, and we, she has a description. And I can go back. This is the drill through stuff. I've got a relational system that allows me to walk through enter in a, a parent record and a child record, display them to the end users and allow them to modify them. So that's some pretty powerful stuff. And again, total time to build this out. You saw how long it took me to build the, the power up event in the other ev environment, um, about five, 10 minutes with talking. It took me about 20 minutes, half an hour, putting in the, the, the views here. I think I have a, a business rule in here that will hide the field over here if, I, if, it's, if it's a, the address is not required and hidden if it's not a virtual event. Wait, did I get it backwards? If it's a virtual event, we don't need an address. And that's what I wanted to say. So um, if it's not a virtual event, I'll require an address. 
that's all configuration too. So that again, 20 minutes, half hour total to build out this thing, put it in front of somebody. The cool thing too is if I'm sitting down with my, my end users, my customers, I'm doing air quotes, whether it's internal, external customers, you saw how easy it was to go in and design this. I can make some tweaks to it and, and change it while we're talking to the customer. I can put it right in front of them. I've got design tools, development tools, publish and show them what's happening, get their feedback and make changes on the fly. Um, I've got an, uh, an even more extensive one that I can show real quick, and I think we've got what, like three, four minutes. Um, we have another event series um, called uh, Power Up, which I've got a portal on top of. Oh, that's not what I wanted to show. <laughs> a little bit more than you're seeing behind the scenes there. So this is a portal that I mentioned before. I wasn't on the, the main cool slide, right, for the image for Dataverse, but what we're looking at is a, is a website and it's just a, this is all configured by, by um, the Power Apps Portals solution. And I'm serving up data coming from Dataverse. Behind the scenes, I've got a list of events and um, we can show them here. And I was able to put in what's called liquid, liquid code, but all this data is coming in from my Dataverse database. And I was able to serve it up to external users um, selectively right i can't go in and modify it but i can go in and look at the event details for philly last this past i guess it was this past year and you can see all this information is stored we've got all this stuff stored off in in um and even the images are stored off in dataverse and what i what i did with this how i did this was i built the solution i built a, a what's called a power up event i mean it should be familiar to start with and i have related sessions i have start and end times um and what I did was I have an app that allows me to see it. So this is a more, and I've worked on this over a period of months. So it took me some time to build this, throwing stuff away, you know, changing how I want to handle things. Um, and wrong environment helps if I bring up the right environment. You see that I have a couple here and I have got, I've got a staging area and I've got my power up event here is segmented from the others, which is kind of cool. Back to the environment stuff. And um, no, it's just being a little bit sluggish. Let's bring up the apps. Come on, you can do it. <clears throat> Just launch it from here. I can go into my solution and run my, my model-driven app. And play. There we go. So what you can see here is, oh, wait, 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 wait log in. Oh, I love that. That's a quirk of if you've worked with model-driven apps is the Cookies have expired, all that fun stuff. But you can see I've got a, um, a very simple model-driven app here um, that shows me the power up events, which is my custom entity we looked at before. You can see there's a lot more to it here. I've got a lot of different tabs. Here's an example of uh, uh, with the sessions, just wanted to show this one bit, some of the cool things you can do with the, the user interface. I've got down here, which is called a, a PCF control I mentioned earlier, customized user interface. This is done by, it's on the PCF um, gallery. PCF.gallery, right, I believe. Um, and I, I have a many-to-many -many relationship behind the scene. I wanted to, to tag categories for my session. And Tangi Tuzard put, it, put together this component. I plopped it into my form, filled in some parameters, and I've magically got a customized user interface because I don't want to go through and look through grids and records and stuff. I can just tick these little boxes. So here's an example of customizing a user interface. I didn't have to build it. I was using a predefined component, another uh, beauty of the Dataverse uh, platform. So I think that's about it. I got one minute left. Um, I know I talked a little bit fast. You got any questions? Let me pull up slides. Um, I'll share these with you because I have a bunch of links for further reading. You know, obviously the Power Platform learning resources, really good website here. If you don't have a, a Power Apps uh, solution, if you want to do Dataverse work, go out and get the community plan, whole bunch of documentation. I think I updated everything. See, they put Dataverse, but it still says Common Data Service. That's not that's not a typo. It wasn't me. And then look at events, either speak or attend the events. And like, like this one, right? This is a fantastic one. You got a whole bunch of people talking about this stuff. Another event uh, group that I work with, Extreme Virtual, and then there's a, an excellent calendar with all kinds of stuff coming up. So if you want to learn, learn more, go read the boring documentation or jump on and, and either speak or attend some of the sessions and support the community. Right on time. How about that? <laughs> Amazing. Oh, thank you, Jim. Um, that was a whistle stop tour. And uh, I, I appreciate there's so much stuff to try and get in. Um, you did excellently in those 50 minutes. Um, there aren't any questions. So now is the time to uh, ask them if you have them, find them in the chat or come off mute. That's absolutely fine. Um, but actually, 
while you're thinking it, 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 you reminded me, I've done this type of presentation for customers and, but you've, you've actually really reminded me how much goes into model driven apps. That I completely take for granted, you know, because yeah. I'm used to it over the years and I'm used to all the tiny intricacies of it all and everything else, but actually there is so much there that you can just use. Um, so that was a really good reminder. Thank you. No, totally agree. I always have to step back when I'm complaining about something and realize like it's doing like about 10,000 things for me that I don't have to worry about. Yeah. yeah this yeah. one little quirk is not that big a deal, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it feels worse than it is. OK, um, no questions, just thank you. But uh, I, I you. wanted to say thank you very much uh, for doing the session and we'll share your slides and, and uh, we can put those on the UG website. Um, yeah, if you want to come off mute, everybody, and give Jim a round of applause, just to say thank you for putting the <laughs> session on. That would be great. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank not, you. I'm bowing. I don't know if I can. Not quite as great, you know, virtually, but I um, no, really appreciate you taking the time to to do the session and share all that knowledge. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so we've got about nine minutes before the next session, which is the Ask Us Anything session that Jim is going to join. I think he said beforehand, um, if he has the time. And that is where you can bring out your all of your questions about anything, any of this stuff we've covered today or anything else that you wanted to ask our experts about. Um, and with that, we'll end this session and see you over there. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot.